right, here we go. We got to hear from Anthony Weaver today. And some stuff kind of came out that uh, we can kind of sink our teeth in. And I want to get into that. Uh, I want to talk about Weaver, his comments, what it means going forward, and what we could pull from his hire because <sighs> we get lots of hype amid the push to go from Fangio to Weaver. And there's benefits to Fangio, and there was benefits to Weaver. Uh, we don't know exactly what he's going to be, but let's get into that because it is not, you know, simple, clear cut like a lot of people want to make it, especially now in the rosy time of a new hire. Remember, they felt the same way about Gase and Philbin and on and on it goes. It's always the way. But you got to parse through that information to try to find out uh, what's the good evaluation. Do it, do it, do it, talk. Uh, there's some big guys uh, got together and had a little conversation. It was supposed to be about the Dolphins, ended up being really all about Tua. I want to get into that because it doesn't really matter if Tua, in this point that I'm trying to make, obviously, if Tua is the guy to get us to a Super Bowl or not. Uh, what the, the reality is that the QB position is a position on the field. And no matter how crazy the talk is of like the Quarterback is everything. This is not reality. We, we clearly saw San Fran could have beat uh, with Purdy, Mr. 262, Mahomes, if there was an extra point kicked. So a lot goes into this. And I want to get into that. But then the last part I want to get into is that the fixation on Tua, ultimately, if you want to win a Super Bowl, it's about fixating on the quarterback. But this team hasn't even won a playoff game in like 20 something years, 30 years, or whatever it is. So there's a lot more holding us back than Tua. We got to win our first per playoff game before we get to the Super Bowl. And, and, and I want to get into that, dig that into that, okay? So uh, the misguided takes aspect of that, I want to dig into it. Some, you know, good stuff, but some misguided. So, um, so that's really it for today, guys. I'll, I'll break it down in chunks. I'm going to chop it up and put it out in shorts. Sometimes you see a little longer shorts. Uh, because that's the way they do it these days. Uh, my wife told me, the tech guys told me, so I'm going to be doing that. So um, I'm doing a Twitter, uh, uh, Curtis, uh, uh, Curtis at East, per, uh, no, Curtis at Finns News One on Twitter. Come check me out there. I'm going to be putting more and more stuff. It's hard. I just, it's, it's hard to dig into that thing, but I, I got to do it. And I'm starting to find joy from it. Uh, the live's going to be off again until March, March 8th. Uh, if you want to get on, contact me at Curtis at AcePerhead.com. Like, I think I got three guys right now. More you want to come on, please come on. I really appreciate you coming on and hearing what you got to say. I'll be going on a vacation uh, in a couple of days, and I won't be back till about March 1st-ish. So I just want to give you that uh, whole heads up. Now, before I get into the show, the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the views, all that stuff keeps me in business. I love the comments. I'm a little behind because of my business trip. On my vacation, I'm going to Catch up, I just kind of fell behind a little bit. But all that stuff keeps me in the biz to do what I love to do. And that's talk football, evaluate football, and then meet you guys and, and, and through our conversations, even in disagreement, to learn and have relationships. So I want to give you a shout out. And a shout out to Ace Bread, my sponsor. Because without the two of you, this show ain't going down. Aceperhead's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, Anthony Weaver was a player. His ability to relate to other players is definitely helped by that gap. There's a fraternity of players, just as a fraternity of coaches. And it's very good that Anthony Weaver was a former player. It doesn't really matter necessarily. I mean, it would help if he was like a Hall of Famer. You would get a different level of respect. Um, but he played, and that is really good. Uh, the guy is obviously a charismatic guy. Uh, he, he, he's been through a bunch of systems. He's kind of rested in the Raven system, which is great, Baltimore. And that's going to help us out a ton. Some of the stuff that he's trying to teach, and he mentioned in his presser, is similar to what uh, Flores had done here. There's going to be man, there's going to be, uh, we uh, put a guy on one guy and he goes across the field, there's going to be blitzing, there's going to be multiples. It's not what Fangio's system's about. And again, it's, it's ridiculous 
that people will say, well, Fangio, he was great coming in here. He changed the NFL, and now his system sucks. Every system succeeds and fails based on the players, obviously the coach, because you can have a good system and a coach who just can't employ it well. He makes the wrong calls, can't motivate his players. But then the other unit, so if it's an offense, the defense, and defense, and the offense, they work in synergy. And when you make an evaluation of a particular coach, you got to take all this into account. Fangio is damn good. He's going to go to Philly next year. I don't know if he won a Super Bowl, but it's going to be an awesome defense, 100%. We made massive improvements. And uh, this is going to tie into something else that Weaver said. Uh, Alan Pupart, who I like it because he's the contrarian now. He gets to play the big-time bad guy. I'm the little bad guy, uh, but he's the big-time bad guy. And I appreciate that. Even if I don't agree with him, I like opposing ideas. Uh, he said right here, Weaver calls Jalen Wam- Ramsey an ultimate chess piece, suggests the Dolphins won't just stick to him as outside corner, but rather move him around. And he said it's kind of like a, a, a disservice to Ramsey to do that. And then so you would get, you'll get people who are saying, well, Fangio didn't change and put him here and there. He was hired in February. He's Vic Fangio. He's got a system. His system is not Flores' system. It's not making guys move around. It's this system. So you hired him with a particular system, knowing who the guy was, his personality, knowing the talent of your team, and then you, in March, trade for Ramsey. How that, you know, how you expect to tell Fangio, oh, we just traded for Ramsey. I need you to do this and that. Meanwhile, he goes down with a knee injury and he comes back midway through the season. So this was kind of foolish, I believe, on Greer's part. Either you hire Fangio and hire the players to fill that spot, or you don't hire Fangio and you get players to fit whoever you want to hire. If it's Ramsey, you want him to be the guy to move around. Fangio's system's not about that. You don't take a guy who's comfortable, who has experience. Do you understand that when you call, you call these plays over and over and over again. You see them against other offenses over and over and over again, and you build experience. To call something totally different puts you in an uncomfortable realm, and it lowers your ability. There's nobody who calls everything because you just don't have the experience. And so Fangio might not have been a fit here because it might have been better to put Ramsey one-on-one, like Weaver's going to do, similar a little bit to floor as a scheme, not as zero, but there's going to be zones, there's going to be blitzes. Uh, if you go and check uh, uh, the Ravens out, they were really, really good uh, in, able, in, in, in putting that nickel out there, stopping you on first down, and then really getting after you with a, pa- with a rush and having a good pass defense. But if you were able to rush on them on that first down, they dropped. So that's their system. So we're going to have to stop in a thin light front, uh, and we're going to have to have linebackers to play that role. uh, Queen and Smith were there. And so this ties into another part he said. He mentioned a lot of players, and he mentioned um, Wilkins as being a guy, key like a key guy to his system, but he's not signed. Now, is he going to get tagged? Is, is Greer going to tag him now? Because he said he had earned free agency. Free is free. Any kind of tag is not free. But he can change his mind. He has that right. So it is, are they going to tag Wilkins? It's very interesting. Maybe it was just a thing to kind of like say, hey, Wilkins, we want you here. We see you're a big guy and maybe massage the ego. I don't know. Now, uh, further, X wasn't labeled as a guy, a key to the future, and neither was Baker. Um, now, Long is obviously a guy. He's a great run stopper, a little bit small, a uh, little bit of an injury history, although he didn't have it this year. But his coverage skills um, aren't great. They're very good in short areas, but he doesn't have the speed to go the distance. And uh, Queen and uh, Smith were asked to cover broader space. So it's very interesting to see if Baker is going to be here or not. I don't expect X to be here. I expect uh, uh, Cam to get a very big play. Uh, They're going to let him, let X go post-June, not pre-June. So you're not going to get that money. I forgot what it was, like 13 million with like maybe nine dead or something like that post-June. 
You're not getting that money for your free agents, your free agents or the free agent class. That's after. So you can sign the late uh, uh, agent guys and you can maybe sign your draft class. So that money's important, but it won't help you sign Hunt, Wilkins, VG. Maybe VG comes back. I don't know. Maybe that's one of the intentions. Maybe they're going to bid on him. I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see. Uh, but X is definitely, I think he's gone. I don't think he's going to restructure. Why would he? Um, you know, I just don't think he was going to. And it'll be very interesting to see if Baker is gone. Now, again, I believe in fair evaluation. Uh, so you're going to have Anthony Weaver come in. In 2020, he led uh, the Texans defense. And they were bottom of the, like the, the list on just about everything. He had one season there, and it was a poor season. Now, even if you're Vic Fangio, or if you don't like Vic Fangio, Brian Flores, if you don't like Brian Flores, you could say Spagnola, uh, whoever you want to put up there on that pedestal as a DC, they can at times take yours uh, and, and beat theirs and theirs and beat yours and over call up a defense, but you need players. Do you think Spagnola would be as good as he was without Jones and McDuffie uh, and Bolton? No. So the talent level is a big piece of the puzzle. Now, he didn't have a lot of talent on that Texans team. He had some, but not a lot. And so Weaver might be a great DC, but you got to pair that evaluation this season with the talent that's here. Now, the the, the uh, media is going to tell you he gets along with people. And look, he's going to use Ramsey to be one-on-one. They always say that. I said in the intro, they loved Gaze. Grace was a brilliant young guy, and Philbin was a, a, a guru. And But then when you don't do well, then they, they burn you. Fangio was a, and then week one, he was terrible, and then when he got better, it was like, oh, maybe. Pretty. Then he's gone. He's like an idiot old man. He's a mean old man. Same thing with everybody else. I think Weaver has potential. I think he can be good. Depends on how the offense does to build up his defense and how the talent is here. And then we can, in that, make our evaluations. But we're on our fourth DC and third scheme in four years. That's not winning football. All right, so do it, do it, do it. If you if you know, is if we were bombed in Pearl Harbor, it was Torah, Torah, Torah. A surprise attack uh, uh, used to indicate uh, that a complete surprise attack had been achieved. So they said that when they realized that they caught the Americans off guard. And they just... Tua, 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 the focus, the hyper focus on Tua is so much like this. I saw uh, right here in uh, uh, NFL.com. Uh, as a quarterback and the most explosive offense, he certainly produced the numbers to fit the reputation. But folks will venture into 2024 with a new question regarding the former Alabama star. Is he good enough to realize the Dolphins' peak potential? Peak potential was crippled because we had a terrible, terrible blocking unit. We weren't physical. We were one-dimensional in that we attacked the same areas over and over again. And a DC's like battleship understood that all the ships were in the corner and you knew what to take care of. And this gets into, I'm not going to talk about who they were. They're four big guys. I like all four of them for different reasons. And they had a little conversation. It was supposed to be on the Dolphins. It became all about Tua. Uh, but at one point, there, somebody was saying that Tua is going to determine what happens in 2024. And then it got a little crazier where somebody said, People are crazy to think football is a team game. It's about the quarterback. And this is so delusional for so many reasons. Now, I'm not saying the guy's a bad guy. I like him for a ton of reasons. But to say that football is not a team sport is so erroneous, so wrong, so ridiculous. As I said, Steel, uh, the 49ers could have beat KC with the world, generational talent in Mahomes if they just kicked an extra point. Okay? If the punt team... Uh, punt return team hadn't got hit in the back of the leg, they would have won. But it goes more than that. You see, football is very basic in the foundational evaluations and principles. Problem is, people take foundational principles like, say, quarterbacks are the most potent piece on the football field, and their play goes a long way to determining how a team does. And if you have the better piece at that position, you have an edge. That's a foundational principle. 
But there's a lot that goes into that. 262 took the great generational Mahomes to the wire. Why? Well, let's understand something. Feliciano, the right guard, who's a top five player, went down. And the back of uh, Buford came in. And if you remember, Purdy was ready to throw that football in the end zone for the touchdown to take the win. But Jones got in on him, rushed the throw, and it went over the receiver's head. Feliciano was in there. He would have, A, blocked him better, or given Purdy that extra half a second. And even Feliciano in his drunken stupor the next day said something nasty to his teammate. And it would have been different. Football is a team sport. If you have one guy who misses his leverage, if the play is designed and the way the defense sets up, tight end is supposed to have inside leverage in order to pop the run, and he takes outside leverage, that right there can end the play. 11 guys doing their job properly. Right techniques, right actions, right getting off on the snap. Football is a team sport. Tua, the quarterback, is a piece of the puzzle. Now, no QB would have gone to the Super Bowl this year with this offensive line tight end group. Every offense, just about, in the playoffs had better tight ends and better offensive line. So there is no one, I can go through it, you know, you look at PFF, uh, they'll say we had the ninth best offensive line, but then they put a little caveat and they say, well, they were 16th best over the last five weeks. But then... They're not saying this was the fastest throwing offense in probably league history. And so that speed of throw was protecting these linemen. And even with the easiest job in the NFL, as Chris Kaufman pointed, it was the worst pro set pass protection efficiency rating in nine years. No one would have won this year. Now, if, if Hunt was in and Connor, maybe it would have been a different story. But they weren't. The depth, all the positions weren't taken care of. Now, um... Art, the art of war, Sun Tzu, all war is deception. If we're all focused on Tua and the quarterback, then all these other important things and the people at the top who are generating, they fall into the background. And they're not going to get the heat if things don't succeed. And this is how Dolphins fans will be screwed by these media guys who I don't think they not believe what they're saying, but... In a way, they're going to lead their own people to be slaughtered because it will create a fog of war over the real problems, and then it'll be all about Tua. Well, we just got a real quarterback in here, then we could make a Watson deal, and then we would be good. How did the Browns do? They had Flacco, and they went to the playoffs. And so the quarterback is not a really a shouldn't be a focus right now because the team has issues. We lack depth. We spent just think of the Chubb trade. How it's holding down his franchise. We could have just signed Van Ginkle for a fraction, maybe $10 million a year, when we traded for Chubb. He would have been here. We'd have had all those picks and probably another $13 million that we could have put into Hunt and uh, Connor, maybe, and Wilkins. But that one pick, that one trade, is hurting us. And there's many things like that. The underpinning of this team is very weak and it needs a lot of work this year. Uh, if you say that the Tua, uh, quarterback, Tua, Tua happens this year with, with Tua and how he plays is going to determine everything, and it's not a team game, then you're saying Dan Marino sucked. Because Tua then should do more than Dan Marino. Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl. Does he suck? Well, he, he's a quarterback. It's not a team game. It's about the quarterback. Maybe you could say, well, the rules kind of changed a little bit. He went against Kelly. Kelly was an inferior quarterback. Not, you know, terrible, but he was inferior. But he was beat most of the time by the Bills. They had the running back, the offensive line, the defense. They had more talent. It's a team game. Quarterback is the deciding factor usually in that, as you saw with Mahomes making those scrambles and stuff. But it's a team game. And if two is going to determine 24, then Dan Marino was a loser. Loser. In reality, Dan Marino is way multiple levels beyond Tua. And if he couldn't do it, there's no way Tua could. This offensive and offensive line and tight end group and just the uh, a depth that we have in some, in some areas on defense is not good enough. It's got to change. It's got to get better. So Mahomes, the great Mahomes, right, he blew us out 26-7. We understood our team was gutted on defense and offense. Uh, Three-point win over the Bills. Seven-point win over the Ravens with two fumbles in the red zone. Should have lost that one. 
And then a three-point win over San Fran with Mr. 262. If it's all about the quarterback, that should have been 37-24, uh, 24-10, and about 42-15. So guys, understand what's going on this season. It's all going to be about Tua, but it's not all about Tua. And anybody who tells you this is not a team game, probably a good person, they got a lot of good things to say, but they're fundamentally wrong and incorrect. It's just like basic. If you've ever played any football, you've ever had any kind of football contact, you know. You could be the star on a team and surrounded by idiots, and you're like, I can't believe I'm losing. So I'll get more stuff out to you, I think, maybe before I go on my vacation. But guys, it's a team game. Let's just evaluate fairly. Let's let it play out. Let's not chomp and, and at each other. And if we have disagreements like this, a few guys I've seen, big guys disagree with, it's okay. Just get better in evaluation. The truth is coming. We were all told there's the greatest offense. We were going to the Super Bowl, and it ended up not being true. All the fighting and hatred and nasty talk, you just could have waited and found out the truth. The truth will be known. But I know the truth is it. This is not all about Tua. So anyway, Curtis saying, get you next time. Be well. Go Fins. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.